Dear brothers and sisters, our topic is about tolerance. Quran, a book of tolerance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kunu qawamina lillah, shuhada'a bil qist, wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin an ta'adilu. اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى says O oh you who believe be witnesses in the sake of Allah and be just and fair even if you have an animosity between you and other people don't let that animosity get into the way between you and being fair and just so for a Muslim, it is justice and fairness with friend and foe. That is the rule. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to be. And when we're dealing with the topic of tolerance, there's two forms of it. There is tolerance among ourselves in dealing with our differences. And then there's the tolerance between this ummah and other nations between Muslim and non-Muslim so these are two distinct types of tolerance and we should have both we should be tolerant among ourselves and then we should be also tolerant with other faiths or other religious groups if I would like to talk about Muslims being tolerant toward others we first of all have to look into this do we need to talk about it or not and the reason why I say do we need to talk about it is because if you notice throughout the lives of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would find that the prophets of Allah would focus on the diseases that their people are suffering from they would not waste their time talking about irrelevant sins or form of e forms of evil that do not exist among their people so when Shu'aib was presenting the message to his people his people were corrupt in their business dealings therefore Sayyidina Shu'aib he focused on this even though it drawed upon him a lot of resistance and it uh, brought upon him a lot of harm usually people like to hear about other people's mistakes but we don't like to hear about our own mistakes the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophets of Allah they would confront their people with their sins they're not gonna talk about the sins of the neighboring village or neighboring town these are your problems so they would focus on that now, is there such a problem among the Muslim community of intolerance towards other faiths? Well, to some extent there is. To some extent there is. However, when one is dealing with the issue of tolerance, usually the party that is asked to be tolerant is the party that is in power. The party that is in control. However, when a people are suffering and oppressed, it is not easy or it's not, doesn't even make a lot of sense to bring up the issue of tolerance. Therefore, with the Muslims of today, since the Muslim Ummah is sort of like in a state of helplessness, when we want to talk about whether we are tolerant or not, I think we should look back into stages of history when the Muslims were in a stable condition, when the Muslim state was in power and in authority, and then see how the Muslims dealt with others. And if we look throughout our history, take for example the relationship of the Muslims with the Jews. Let's look at the history of this relationship, which is a pretty old relationship it goes back to the time of the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
When Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to Medina, when he migrated to Medina, there were three Jewish tribes living in Medina. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he approached them with an open heart, with good will. He entered into an, a, 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 a pact or an agreement with them very early on when he entered into Medina. And the terms of this agreement reveal that he is treating them as citizens of Medina. And they have the same obligations and they have the same rights. And he says that it is a, it is a duty upon the Muslims to defend the Jews and it's a duty upon the Jews to defend the Muslims in case there is any danger. We're all in Medina together, together. we have to stand up and protect it together. And Rasulullah had so much good expectations from the Jews. He desired that one day they would be his followers, one day they would stand up and adopt and embrace Islam. That was his expectations because he felt that since they are the people of the book, they have the scripture with them, they are familiar with the, with the, with the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that would make them inclined towards embracing Islam. And then after, all, after that, whenever the Muslims, in the early days of the Islamic expansion, whenever the Muslims would enter into a land that had uh, uh, Jewish people, you would find that the Muslims would offer them protection and rights and defend their religious rights. That happened with the Jews of Yemen when Islam entered into Yemen. And it happens with, happened with the Jews of Jerusalem. And it happened in other parts of the Muslim world. And then when the Muslims arrived in Spain, the same thing happened. When Spain fell and was taken over by King Fernandez and Queen Isabella, the Jews of Spain had to flee from Christian persecution and they moved into North Africa and a big portion of the Jewish population that was living in Spain ended up moving to Istanbul to be close to the Muslim Sultan right in the capital of the Islamic Khilafah. So that is the history of the Muslims with the Yahud. Now, the other side, when it came to the Yahud, even though Rasulullah approached with this good will and this desire of cooperation, we find that the payback was that the Yehud attempted to assassinate Rasulullah not once, but a few times. And every time that was exposed. That the tribe of Banu Qurayza committed treason against Rasulullah against the Messenger of Allah in the Battle of Al-Khandaq, in the Battle of Al-Ahzab. And nowadays we find that the Palestinian people are suffering under the Israeli government and that suffering has been going on for 50 years. And it's not getting better, it's only getting worse. And the Palestinian people have endured this suffering for so long. And they've, been, and they've been quiet. And now when they're starting to stand up and ask for their rights, the media immediately accuses them of being the aggressor. So not only is the government of Israel oppressing them, but it's also changing the facts and deceiving the world in this big lie. Nowadays, when it comes to the Muslim Ummah, there is suffering, there is very widespread suffering. And if one would look at it objectively and see the suffering that the Muslims are going through, an outside observer who would look at this fairly would say that rather than the Muslims being intolerant, it shows that the Muslims are having actually too much tolerance. When you have one million plus dead in Iraq over a period of 10 years of embargo, 
that is enforced by the United States and Britain primarily. And you have a million people are dead by now. The majority of them are children. The Muslims are silent. When you have the Islamic people around the world living under despotic governments that are supported primarily by the West, and whenever the Muslims try to change that condition in these countries, you would find that Western money and arms would flood in to support and help. So the condition now of the Muslims, and in fact, there is a, 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 an author, his name is uh, James Rustin. He wrote a book about Salah ad-Din and Richard uh, Lionheart, talking about the history of the Crusade Wars. He said that in the conflict between Salah ad-Din and King Richard, uh, Salah ad-Din was winning in one battle after another. But then whenever Salah ad-Din would conquer an area and win, he would end up releasing the soldiers, the crusader soldiers, and letting them free. He would get appeals for mercy and help, and he would just let them go, even though they were just fighting him a day ago. And these soldiers ended up gathering in the city of Tyre, and they are the ones who were able to turn the tables after Salah ad-Din died and to take over the coastal cities of Lebanon and Palestine again. So the assessment of Rustin was that the problem with Salah ad-Din, even though he was winning in these wars and battles against the crusader armies, but his problem was that he was too tolerant and kind towards his enemy. And that tolerance and kindness ended up affecting him and it was the reason of his demise. Therefore, one needs to move on to the form of tolerance that we really, really lack. And that is tolerance of different views among us. That is the area where we have a significant problem. There is intolerance among us of having different views. And that is quite clear and prevalent in the different sects and groups that we have and the problems that are erupting between these different points of view. And that is an area that needs to be dealt with and it's, a, 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 it's an emergency. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't have disputes among you, otherwise you would fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the end result, the consequence of having differences among you will be your failure.